everyone and welcome to another video and welcome to the Honda CRV 2019. The model that we have today is a Honda CRV 2019 all wheel drive touring version. So I'm gonna go from the exterior discussing about the exterior and then move on inside the interiors and in between give you the driving how, how this car handles, how this car drives and everything about this in detail in this video. Now starting off with since let me tell you first thing is that ever since I was a kid I mean Honda was one of my favorite brands growing up with watching Honda was was the best thing to be honest with you because let's let's be honest if you remember the Honda Civic and the Honda City those were one of the the best models that they came out that because of the fact that some of the models were so futuristic and and the, the the layout of the dash the digital speedometer it was something that was never heard about and that's what Honda tried to do and let me tell you something that with this car it's it's, it still has maintained that same sort of design feature and everything that is that is pretty much modern which is stylish is is all of course associated with the hondas now starting off with the exterior because this is a japanese brand so there is some sort of design cue that you will get when you see a honda because obviously the car has got from outside it's it, now this car looks pretty huge otherwise when you sit from inside but it's not that huge of a car because it's it's still it falls inside somewhere around a compact and a, a mid-size kind of suv now first the outside design and when you see the design language it's so the front has the the bonnet has this arch which if you sit and when you drive you can see those arches which makes the the car look a little bigger from inside but it is not but it's just for the for the styling and once you move around the car has pretty much a lot of new design features and a smooth sort of and some sort of aggressive lines also at the back especially the tail lamp which has a uh, this bulging uh, for, from the from the from the corners where, which you can also see it from the side mirrors and this is something which honda has been doing it and pretty much all its models have been having this unique sort of style and uh, you go around and then there is big boot at the back there is there is enough of space at the back for two big bags and a lot more stuff as well also the boot is being operated remote operated so you can open it using your remote and close it as well also it's operated from inside as well so you can have any options and then use it however you like so the honda crv comes with a sunroof and this is kind of a little tiny if i if i would say that so the honda crv has both the headlight and the tail light cluster uh, led so pretty much all of the eight that you see is all led and also when you move around you would find that the fit and finish of the the car is pretty good honda crv is one of the best SUVs in the Honda lineup it's one of the best selling SUVs in the world as well so this is one of the most premium products uh, from Honda and it, it surely does feel like it when you sit inside now moving on from the exterior to the interiors and the whole design language in the, in the inside as well is pretty pretty cool and when you sit inside you are greeted with the leather seats and soft touch plastics everywhere also the the dashboard has a center screen which is uh, which is a, a big screen for your odometer and your uh, rev counter which is which is uh, in a horizontal fashion and your speedometer is digitally displayed on both sides you have the various warning lights and also your temperature and the fuel on one of the sides the steering wheel comes standard with 
uh, a normal uh, leather covering as well. The steering wheel also ca controls all your infotainment system and also your cruise control is activated from the steering wheel as well. The infotainment system feels a little outdated with, with, compared with the competitors because let's be honest when the, the, the font on the infotainment system is a little too kind of plain but I hope if they could have improved on that but otherwise it's, it's a 7 inch touch screen which works quite well it's got all the features to control your navigation your phone your it also comes with apple play and also android auto is it, it's fully loaded otherwise in terms of the tech so this car has one really good feature and also a questionable feature and that is that this car has first of all two camera system one is for the reversing and the reversing camera is wide angle and you can easily see the cars around but there is one camera which is mounted on the right hand side so this camera only works when you take a right turn and when you signal your your right indicator but there is no camera for the left indicator and i wonder why but then when i realized that now UAE most of the times you are always going to take a left hand uh, sorry a right hander and not the left hander but I mean there, there, there was no point in skipping that camera instead if they would have given both it would have been a really nice feature but when I think of it you don't want sometimes to move your head to your right side so your right side camera is here but the left side is always around so that is why maybe this feature is useful also the camera quality is a little bit disappointing if i would say but it's probably to do with the fact that but maybe the screen uh, has a low resolution and that is probably the reason why the camera also comes out a little uh, less in terms of quality let me tell you first of all the AC is one of the best in, in most of the cars that I've ever driven and if you stay in UAE and probably if you stay during the summer you know how bad the, the weather gets it gets almost up to 50 degrees yes it gets up to 50 degrees and in this car it, it just literally takes 30 seconds to cool the entire car uh, completely and uh, and i'm not even kidding it's so powerful it, and i don't even have tinted windows yet this car somehow manages to sort of cool this car so quickly and ac is one of the strongest points in this car now one great feature that honda has done is not merge the climate system into the touch screen as well so they've already given the multimedia inside the touch screen but the the aircon controls are still outside and i'm glad about it that they maintained it like that now so the fit and finish on this car is particularly impressive because of the fact that look at all the seats and pretty much uh, even the door cards and and by the way uh, this comes with the leather and the plastic trim which is made to look like the wood but it's actually the plastic but still given all of that the whole fit and finish is still very very good and it feels pretty premium you know for the price that you're paying now this car comes at a price starting at a price of uh, 92,000 500 dirhams and that is the 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 le model which is the front wheel drive and then as you move on the prices keep increasing now the front two seats are electronically controlled meaning you can slide them around you can uh, adjust the back support and all of that is electronically controlled and also it comes with the lumbar support so that means you can change and then you can get the support for your back as well and that works pretty efficiently in supporting your bag so the rear view mirror comes with an auto dimming feature but one particular point to mention is the rear view glass feels a little small to my liking and the pillar seems a little bigger but there is another small glass at the back which is the c pillar and that basically makes sure that you get at least some of the the, the blind spot covered from that, uh, that that glass as well now the car comes with a lot of storage around if 
if I start with and the doors on the side they have enough of storage to that is in the front enough of storage for a, a big bottle and also some more things also at the back it continues also there is storage at in the hand rest and this hand rest is designed in the, in the most in the most amazing and ergonomical way possible because the hand rests just perfectly on this and it gives you a lot of support during long drives also there is a slidable uh, sort of partition uh, in the in the in the in the storage compartment in the in the in this box and also you get two cup holders out here and also some some small storage here and there also there is a proper glove box that is also quite huge so that is pretty much it from the the interior part and this car is pretty nicely made is what i would tell you and the interior fit and finish is quite good this car comes with a lot of safety features as well so to start off with it comes with abs it comes with ebd which is electronic brake, brake distribution so it comes with two front passenger airbags and it also got the side airbags and the curtain airbags so and this is all standard in every model so whichever model you take you would get all these safety features now moving on this is pretty much the interiors that we've covered and i think the more important bit that i really want to talk about is the driving because I'm really interested. Now, this car comes with a 2.4 liter IV Tech petrol engine, which is a dual overhead camshaft, the DOHC. And this, uh, this car produce, this particular engine produces 184 uh, BHP and uh, 244 Newton meters of torque, which is fairly a reasonable amount considering how big this car is. And one thing is that this car is mated with a CVT transmission. Now, if yes now if you know about a, a cvt transmission is it is an endless gear setup it's an infinitesimal amount of gears that you can use so there is a cone system in the cvt again the cvt is a complicated system that i'll explain in some other videos but in short it's it's a it's a two two cone system where the cvt is uh, th there are infinitesimal gears in it and that is being used to power the vehicle now usually the cvt is a little lagging when when it comes to powering the vehicles and that is why a lot of manufacturers don't use them mainly Nissan and Honda if you see they use the CVT technology but what I can confirm you is that in this car the CVT is very very nice and it's very responsive because let's say let's see uh, let's say there is obviously some amount of lag from the system but what this car tries to do is eliminate that lag so well and I get when when you start from the standstill there is a, a second or something lag that happens when you accelerate but once this car picks up the speed it is really nice and also the paddle shifts that come with it they also shift quite instantaneously barely half a second and the, the gear shifts happen but anyways this is a cvt and you're meant to enjoy this as an automatic now coming on with the the shifter stick now the shifter stick is a very standard layout from your park reverse neutral and your drive and also it comes with a sport feature now moving on with the tires and the suspension the car comes with 18 inch diamond cut alloys the suspension is quite comfortable as well and it pretty much eliminates all the road bumps that you can find on the road and inside there is bare amount any noticeable amount of jerks or any dry discomfort the steering is an electronic steering so which is again as you know a lot of manufacturers are moving away from the hydraulic steering pretty much everyone has moved from the hydraulic to the electronic steering wheel now the problem with the electronic steering is that sometimes there some cars they don't tend to give you the feel of the road but what i can confirm you is that in this car 
the 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 steering is pretty responsive i would say it it still lags a little because sometimes you do tend to think that you don't get that response of what is going on at the road now the suspensions are pretty good and that is the reason this car has a bare minimum body roll now i wouldn't say it doesn't have the body roll at all but it does have a slight amount of body roll but again honda has been pretty good in making a new chassis which is doing its job quite well so the chassis is pretty agile and pretty stiff and that is the reason you don't find a lot of flexibility in the chassis but in terms of the suspension because they are slightly on the softer side so you do still find uh, a bit of body roll but otherwise i wouldn't say that's a lot it has improved also the car comes with all four disc brakes so the braking action is on point as well it's it's got a softer feel at the start when you press the brake but once you are once you get the travel through the the brakes come in pretty effective so in terms of the braking action it does its job well i would say now although the car is an all wheel drive system but to be honest it's not particularly an all wheel drive system so usually uh, in in your usual running conditions the car is only front wheel drive but when the car senses that uh, that uh, there is uh, a loss of traction at the rear wheels or at the front wheels then what it will do is it would switch the rear the rear wheel drive as well and then you will get all all wheel drive and that is how it works but it's got a good height ride height as well there is a fair amount of the ground clearance so i don't think it it's going to be a lot of problems when you take it off road but this is uh, only when you have a loss of traction and that is when the rear wheel drive would kick in so the car doesn't come with any driving modes but they are just the standard modes that you get from your gear shifter stick which is the d and the sport mode but there is also an econ mode which is an economical driving mode so that basically helps you to save some amount of fuel there is one cool animation that i wanted to show you all particularly in the dashboard and that is when when you are accelerating the there is a light in the center there is this one center light which blurs out on both the sides and just fades away in the end so it's it's a white light which is generally when the engine is running or when you are powering the engine but when you leave the throttle the 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 light goes green which is to signify that you know you are saving fuel and that is a really cool and a neat feature which when you look at night it looks really amazing another thing to add and it's quite an important point i don't know how i missed that was that this car comes with so many chargers i mean for each passenger there is one charging point yes and i'm not even kidding because this comes with a normal power outlet source there is also one inside there is another power outlet source there is there are two usbs again and there is an hdmi port yes an hdmi port inside a car and i'm guessing that when you connect you can connect your laptop with this screen as well and also the usb obsession doesn't stop there there are two usb ports in the back as well under the ac vent so i think four passengers or even five passengers and all of them have different charging points now one of the best features that this car has by far is the ability to start the car with the remote yes this car starts with the remote and let me demonstrate you how it works exactly now in order to start the car with your remote control there is a slight procedure that you have to follow now i'm going to show you what is that so press this lock button twice and you will hear a beep and then press the engine start button you will also see the lights blinking again and it starts and when you want to switch it off press it again and that is why you should buy a honda also the the screen is actually matte and that is one good reason that you know there won't be any fingerprints because matte option is the best option as you saw in the other car the other day in volvo when it was a glossy one and there is a lot of fingerprints but 
in this it's a matte finish and that is why it's 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 one of the best screens if i am honest but also you get a lot of other technological features inside the car and it's a fairly easy to use everyday car with a ton of storage everywhere inside the car i have driven this car again for about four days and what i can tell you is it's a very efficient car as well it delivers an efficiency of about 10.5 to 13 kilometers based on uh, what type of driving so if it's a city driving it gives you a around 10.5 to 11 and when you go outside on a longer journeys it gives you 13 almost 13 kilometers and per liter and i have actually achieved that in short even though the engine is big and it's still a heavy suv but it doesn't even compromise on any of the fuel efficiency in fact honda uh, honda promotes a lot of efficient stuff and that is the reason it's got the econ mode as well and also there is there are features like the brake hold when you when you are on a hill climb or when you want the, the car to hold your brakes in the traffic lights so this car is fully loaded with a lot of technological stuff as well is what i am trying to say so when you're considering buying an suv also try to put this in the list as well because because of the price factor this is a great buy anyways i think that is pretty much it for this video i hope i have covered all pretty much all the aspects of the car and if you have anything or any doubt make sure to uh, or any questions about this car make sure to put it down in the comment section and i will make sure to reply to them as well anyways give it a thumbs up if you like this video and make sure to share and subscribe for more videos to come until we meet next time bye bye